I'm always amused watching the evening news about what we choose to uh, pay attention to, and uh, of course the news gives us what we're interested in. And I'm sure this week, or certainly today, uh, it's going to be about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, right? Because, you know, that's really important stuff. Now, I'm not saying it's not important, and to some people, especially them, I'm sure it's a big deal, you know, trials, defamation of character, stuff like that. It's, a, it's all over Twitter, but boy, I wish some of the stuff we're about to talk about were all over Twitter. I was, I was uh, talking to a, a school teacher uh, earlier today, and we were talking about how great it would be if we could get some of this quantum spiritual stuff in schools. And how fun it would be if we could explain to them the nature of the, the world that they're living in based upon the type of game that the physics is demonstrating that it is. In just the last couple days, there was another study that came out, a scientific experiment, uh, regarding the double slit experiment. And to me, it's one of the most important of all scientific experiments for sure. It's mind-blowing. It's also backing up the idea that the world is in superposition, that there's multiple variations to the game that we're living in, but most certainly it's like a game. I say that's why Jesus says, seek and you'll find. Seek and you will find is because we're playing a game of hide and seek. And I'm gonna draw that again, or talk about that again, using our drawings from the last couple of weeks. So this is a recent study that just came out. I'll read the first two paragraphs. Neutrons in the double slit experiment really do individually take both paths. Now, let me read the article, or the first two paragraphs, and we'll discuss its, uh, what it means. An important principle of quantum mechanics has been confirmed via a variation of a thought experiment suggested by Einstein, made possible by technological advances. The researchers, researchers provide evidence for quantum superposition using individual particles rather than statistical techniques. A team of scientists has performed the double slit experiment using neutrons, adding spin measurement equipment to investigate the path each neutron takes with rigor pre previous generations of physicists only imagined. In the journal Physical Review Research, the authors re report a result consistent with the neutron dividing itself with part going through each slit. Now, if you are aware of this uh, study, it, you, you probably know basically what that means. Instead of using photons or light, light particles, they use an actual physical particle, a neutron, which is just a uh, subatomic particle from an atom. And they're using neutrons, which means physical things that they're doing the double slit experiment with. And what they're finding is that the neutron exists in two places at once, not just one. If you don't know about this experiment, please look it up. This channel talks about it a little bit, but go Google double slit experiment and learn a little bit about it. But it's absolutely the reason why we have these movies coming out like Doctor Strange and the Everything Everywhere All at Once movie about superposition in the multiverse. Why? Well, it's what we've, we've drawn and what I wanna emphasize using some teachings from the Tao and from Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, why we're all in a game, why we're all playing the same game, and we're doing so at different levels, maybe different intensities, different type of focus, but why all spiritual teachings come down to explaining that the world is a matrix, it's like a video game, and that is explainable to, to elementary school kids. Very simply, by understanding of what we drew last time, or last couple weeks, so imagine everything starts just like a TV that's off, dark, and then someone turns on the TV and then light explodes and everything comes from that. The nature of the world that we're living in, Big Bang if you will, everything comes from that Big Bang. And we explode into existence and here we have many different variations of people <clears throat> and what we've described is different variations of people that are relatively speaking different, uh, different distances if you will from the source. You could call that God or the Holy Spirit of the Tao but everything springs into existence from that. We didn't exist physically, then we did, here we are, but we come from that source. Now we have all these different people, if you will, that are, that are um, at different distances from that. Of course, that is not an actual physical distance, it's an energy distance or a spiritual distance, but the people that are closer have more light and people that are further away have less light. And that's the simple game. We all are trying to find what that is, we're trying to get back to that, and we all come at it from different directions, but it's the same game nevertheless. So, the, I'm gonna to pull together these, these different type of concepts to back this up. Starting with the double slit experiment, really what the double slit experiment is saying, that there's an infinite number of variations in this physical world, hence the idea of the multiverse. 
there's variations all over the place. There's a copy of you in a multitude of other universes, if you will. All of them exist at the same time. They've done it with neutrons now, and your body's loaded with neutrons. The fact is, is there are other versions of each of us in other universes. It's really one big complex universe like a matrix, but here we are in that universe, and all of us are experiencing variations of that, experiencing variations of that. And we are variations of those variations. I mean, I'm a variation of this spot. You could call that God or, <clears throat> you know, the, uh, the Tao or whatever. And we are, I'm a variation of that. So are you. But within this game, Steve has variations of Steve, which gives me different um, experiences I can have, but also gives me some free will. If I don't like the experience I'm having now, I can choose another path or another timeline, if you will, by shifting my, my focus, my energy, my vibration. By shifting the understanding of who I am, then I'll experience a different uh, variation of Steve. The better I get at getting back to that spot, the more peace I feel, and that's where the spiritual teachings are gonna come into play. So again, what do we have? We all come from the source, we all explode into existence, here we all are, whether it's Big Bang Science, um, or using deep spiritual concepts, that's what's going on. And the, the game, the object of the game, is to, to recognize that we come from that, that spot. So here we are with the, the Tao Te Ching, verse 52. All under heaven have a common beginning. Okay? Common beginning. We all started from that spot. Big bang. This beginning is the mother of the world. Hey, we all have the same mom. Having known the mother, we may proceed to know her children. Well, here we all are, you know, people, but also money and sandwiches and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff, like this book says, the, the Tao is the mother of 10,000 things, okay? So, we come from the mother, and here we are experiencing each other. Nice to see you all. Then it says, having known the children, we should go back and hold on to the mother. Well, there's the game. Once you know where you came from, remember that. Right? Buddha means to wake up, go, wait, I came from this place. This is the world of illusion. This is Maya. But the real reality, the upper reality, is that spot. It continues, keep your mouth shut, guard your senses, and life is ever full. See, that's good advice for these ego beings out here who don't understand any of this and are telling each other what's really going on and what we need to do and how we're going to fix the world. Again, this book, the Tao, plus every spiritual teaching, we're not doing nothing. We're experiencing something. The world, as the Tao says, will fix itself based upon its own rhythms, based upon what we do in it. Okay? Nothing needs to be fixed. Mirrors don't need to be fixed. We need to fix ourselves. And the world's really good at that, teaching us what we need to work on. Okay? And so, keep your mouth shut and guard your senses. Life is ever full. That's because we feel the sensation of the mother... Whenever we're able to shut up this stupid mind, this ego mind, it doesn't, this doesn't mean does not think, does not mean we're not supposed to think. It means we need to learn how to tone it down sometimes, right? While you're out here, use that mind, but then take some time, you might call it the Sabbath, to take a break and settle this mind down and connect to the mother again. There's the game. Open your mouth, always be busy, and life is beyond hope. Flat out telling the ego to shut up, right? Open your mouth, always be busy. This is us, Americans, blah, blah, blah. This is what we should do. That's what we should do. I'm doing it right now, sort of. Uh, and, and if we do that, always so busy, we miss the sensation, the vibration of what the mother is. That sweet spot, if you will, we can't pick up on it. You know what uh, in the book of Living and Dying, it says is your own wise guide. We all have, we are all connected to that. Each one of us can do that. So you go on your way, I go on mine. We can be all the different variations. We all have access to the source. We can all hear that voice. And if we just calm that mind down, we can hear that voice. And boy, don't we experience what the world really is. Seeing the small is called clarity. Okay, well, there's quantum physics. Seeing the small is called clarity. Quantum physics is the small. It's the science of the small. Seeing the double slit experiment and recognizing what it's suggesting is called clarity. And that helps us with the game. You're like, oh, I get it. We're all variations of the mother here. We're all variations of the spirit. We're all still connected to it. And we're all at different um, time frames, if you will, in getting back to it. We're all going to do it. It's the only thing that feels good. All of Buddhism and the Four Noble Truths is about do it any other way, you're going to suffer. 
but learn how to detach from all these various things from outside uh, this the mother here learn how to detach from that by, by uh, natural law your experience of the divinity will show up in Course in Miracles it says this is your divine inheritance what we have to do is remove the barriers to our awareness of its existence and what are those barriers judgment shame guilt fear doubt all that kind of stuff this is bad you're bad I'm bad all that okay those are all the barriers we have experiences you know many many decades if not many many lifetimes where we have a chance to learn this as the Bible says make the best use of time right learn how to calm the mind and then tap into that and so that is part of the the shutting your mouth and, and, and guarding your senses but when you see the small that's called clarity keeping flexible is called strength okay flexibility means tolerance it means tolerance for everybody's individual choices but it also means loving your enemy okay because some people are going to choose different things than you if it if your path works for you kalama sutta fine follow your path if it doesn't work for you try a different one but don't be telling other people what to do on their paths because guess what if they don't find this we could call that god or christ if they don't find it they're gonna suffer see so there's some truth in what we when we're telling other people what to do there's some truth the fact is um, all this physical stuff whether it's having money or not having money or having sandwiches or not having sandwiches that's human stuff fine we should play that game but the deep sense of peace is recognizing we all have the ability to tap back into this right and so that's telling each other what to do spiritually okay it's why Jesus says to judge not from mere appearance but to judge correctly because we all have the ability to tap into that source using the shining radiance you return again to the light and save yourself misfortune wow that's good using the shining radiance that's why i drew the sun here think of the sun and what it does and all these different rays come out from the sun the rays are different but the same because they come from the same source and they 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 are responsible for everything that we're experiencing down here okay now if we if we just flip that into spiritual awareness or the holy spirit or the Tao, same sort of concept, but it's an inner one. It's the life force that animates all us. It's the exact same life, life force in everybody. And when we use that shining radiance, the Holy Spirit, and return again to the light, you save yourself misfortune. Well, that's because you don't have to experience as much adversity. And if you do experience adversity, you wouldn't call it that. You might call it a test. Because now I can be in traffic and be at peace. And who doesn't experience pain and suffering? We all do. And what we often do is sit down and say, well, that's not fair because they're not experiencing as much as me. Well, guess what? They have to get back to that. And the hurdle is just as difficult for them, whoever it is, uh, than it is for you. To get divorced from the ego, that's hard work. And we all have to do it. And so it's actually completely fair in the end. And those that go through misfortune ultimately get nurtured along their way a lot quicker because the motivation is higher as a result. And then you feel better when all of a sudden you start to break free from our ego clinging. And then it ends with, this is called the practice of eternal light. So I call it hide and seek. That's what the game is, okay? The, the solution to this game, like Jesus said, is seek and you'll find. Well, look for sandwiches and look for money. Look for other people. You're not going to find the mother or the Christ or the Buddha or whatever. But if you do look in the right area, you're going to start to find the truth inside yourself. Like Rumi said, if I look for myself, I find God. When I look for God, I find myself. Well, that's interesting. That's for all of us. And we all get back to that. Well, this game, we could call it the eternal light. And that links to Krishna, this line in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, if you get the basic idea of the game, we all start in the same spot. We all then get separated, sometimes diametrically opposed. Some people might be doing better than others in the game, but that doesn't make them better. They might have been here earlier, started the game earlier, or whatever, different circumstances. If I plant an acorn in the ground and put another one on the street, one will grow, the other one won't, but it's not that acorn's fault, okay? If we understood all, we'd forgive all. We're all playing the same game. And this is Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita explaining to Arjuna the nature of reality. When you perceive the unity existing in separate creatures, here's the separate creatures, and there's the point of unity. When you perceive the unity existing in separate creatures and how they expand from unity, see, the source exploded into being and here we all are once you perceive that you attain the infinite spirit that doesn't sound much different than the eternal light does it 
So this is the Tao Te Ching calling this game the eternal light game. We have to tap into the eternal light. Uh, this is Krishna saying you attain the infinite spirit. Well, that's the infinite spirit. Infinite is where superposition is because it's the science of infinite possibilities and all these infinite variations. All of us are playing this game. And sometimes we forget it entirely and then we drift, okay? But once we get focused, if you know the Eightfold Path in Buddha, I think it's step seven is to stay focused. If you get focused on this game and you pay attention to the infinite spirit or the seeking of it through all of us expanding from, from unity here, now you can love your enemy. Even though they're exactly opposite from you in the physical world, they got to do the same thing. They got to get back to that spot. They got to cling to the spiritual mother, if you will, or the Christ within. And they're going to have to love you back, right? Be the first. Do what Gandhi says. Be the change we want to see in the world, right? Let's see what would happen individually first. Buddha's last words, strive for your own liberation with diligence. If you break free from the, the conditioning, as Paul says in, in the Bible, to not be conformed by the patterns of this world, right? Well, the patterns of this world is a bunch of people arguing about who's right and who's wrong. And none of that even matters. All that matters is that you recognize that you're a divine spiritual being. We're all playing the same game. We're at different rates of development, that's for sure. But if you want to win the game, you have to perceive the unity in everybody. And that's only done by using the the clarity of the small, if you will, by understanding that the quantum physics is there to back this up. Infinite number of variations, we're experiencing one of them, but your ability to perceive the ultimate source, that's how we win the game.